Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here with this uh, morning mountain weather update. So my headline for the next seven days, this rich Pacific Northwest flow that's happening right now will break loose and start to affect the Intermountain West. That'll happen 12-7 through about 12-8. And then there's a second wave that'll come off the Pacific around 1210. That one is minor. It's really the first surge into the interior that's th going to drop the, um, the more serious accumulation. You can see the timing there, Colorado, Utah, Wyoming. Um, in Colorado, it starts late 12-7, runs through about early 12-9. Second wave, 12-10, which is minor. Utah, Wyoming, 12-7, 12-8. Um, I'm also going to talk about a big East Coast storm system that's uh, developing in the... Uh, in the forecast here. So let me take you over to uh, water vapor satellite imagery. Oranges and reds represent your drier air aloft where your moisture transports and your whites and your blues. So big area of low pressure hitting the Pacific Northwest and BC right now. Second one behind it. So those are the two in the forecast. Let me draw in the flow. Uh, they're both just kind of being moved along by this jet pattern. Uh, which then is going to feed down into the East Coast and develop that big East Coast storm on 1210 and 1211. But both will come in and again, it's really the first one that uh, will have the bigger, produce the bigger accumulation across the interior. Here's the forecast radar and satellite. So by this afternoon, that's your view. By tomorrow morning, there comes that first wave, breaks loose, snow in Idaho, Montana, the Wasatch, and the Tetons, and eventually, Throughout the day on 12-7, it starts to expand a little bit. Some of that drops down into the central and northern mountains of Colorado. And some of this is going to clip Tahoe North in uh, California. That might be the only hope in the next seven to nine days. Here's 12-8 in the morning, more widespread. It's all snow. Cold air's pouring in. Um, snow is more widespread. Western slope of Colorado. And throughout the day on 12-8, then it drops all the way down into Denver there. By the afternoon, we're looking at a few inches of accumulation. And by the time we get into early 12-9, it's wrapping up in Colorado, curtailing, moving away, and that'll probably be the end of it. Um, so then we wait on the next wave, and it's fast and it's minor. Here it comes, 12-10 in the morning. It's moving through Idaho, Montana, um, the uh, Tetons, and it will brush the Wasatch and also brush the center to northern mountains of Colorado, 12-10. Now, by the time we get into late 1211, there really isn't much happening. We might have one additional area of low pressure that tries to spin up in southeast Colorado after 1211, like 12, 12, 13, or 14, somewhere in there. But the confidence is pretty low on that. Okay, so let me take you over to the jet pattern. This is, again, the one low that probably drops the most accumulation, 127, 128, early 129. You can see the dip in the jet that dropped through Wyoming and Colorado to support it. To support it happening. By 1210, it's over and the, the flow is turned progressive much faster, so the wave that comes through on 1210 will not have a whole lot of support. And by the time we get into 1215, you can see what could have been the development, a little bit of a, a dip in the jet moving out of Colorado, New Mexico. Hard to say whether that load develops or not uh, in, in southern Colorado, northern New Mexico, um, but it's something to keep on the horizon. Uh, we'll see if it happens. Okay, as far as totals go, Today through the 9th, looking at about a foot for the Wasatch, uh, 8 to 12 for the Tetons, and in Colorado, generally 4 to 10 inches. And uh, again, this just captures that really that initial wave, potentially 5 to uh, 12 inches from uh, Heavenly up to Shasta, Tahoe to Shasta. Pretty good numbers for the Pacific Northwest, interior BC, and uh, up at Marmot Basin, the Sunshine Village, anywhere from 3 to 8 inches during that period. And that happens probably mostly on the 6th and maybe early 7. Here's the second period, second wave that comes through. Pretty minor, although a couple of places squeeze out 4 or 5 inches across the Tetons and central Idaho. And potentially, and late in the period, if we get that development in southern Colorado, northern New Mexico, that would help uh, move up the totals, push up the totals. Uh, we'll see. But again, you can, you can kind of see that second wave just isn't as pronounced. Eastern numbers look like this. Northeast. Again, it's all rain initially through Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine on 1210. It does change to snow on 1211 in the morning, which is how we're going to see, how we're going to get the, the snow development. But again, it's rain early. Um, New York State does a little bit better, 8, 9, 10 inches around Snow Ridge. You're on the colder side a little bit faster, a little bit earlier. Here's how that storm system plays out. So this is the jet pattern on 1210 late. You can see the coddling of that low pressure over the Ohio Valley, and eventually that'll sweep up. A lot of jet support, a lot of wind, but a lot of warm air initially. 
Here's the actual forecast for that storm system on 1210. You can see it's all rain on the, uh, the warmer side of the storm, on the east side of the storm, all the way up into Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. And then it's colder on the back side where you're going to get that snow wrapping in behind the cold front. So eventually all that would move up into the northeast. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this, uh, for this update. Always appreciate you tuning in here and take care.